Cornerstone. Bye, Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> I just love her. She's such a good work, energetic people. Hi, Jan. All right. You know, our God is so amazing and so big and so mighty and incomprehensible of his power and his glory and his grace and his mercy. And this song, I'm going to fumble through and try to get it just due. But let's remember, listen to the words, you know, not me, but uh, get the meaning. It's because our God is indescribable. in my heart and you love me the same you are amazing God you are amazing God all right that's a new one to me that was fun. We have our girls coming out here, Danny, Emma. Hey guys, I know you've been missing Emma, but the band is back.
wanting a place to hide this weird soul. This vagabone. I tried with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. Of Guatemala. And just when I ran out of road, I met a man I did not know, and he told me that I was not alone. He picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior. Because he healed my heart, changed my mind, forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the master, I thank the savior, I thank God. I cannot deny what I've seen, got no choice but to believe my doubts I'm burning. you guys all looking at? Hey, it's, it's good to be here tonight. Good to see each and every one of you. Thank you very much for coming. I, I wonder, just as we get started, I, I wonder, Brother Joe, would you just bring us into God's presence with a word of prayer?
Amen. Thank you very much, my brother. I wonder, just as we get started tonight, does anyone have a, a praise? Anybody got a praise that they want to share with us this evening? Is, is there anybody? Let's, let's have uh, Brett first, then we'll get to you, Michael. Go ahead, Brett. Amen. Yeah, it's, it's great to have a break in the weather. Michael, go ahead, Michael. You, take the mic, would you, because there's folks online. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Anybody else have a, a praise? Yeah, Walter. I do. Amen. Thank you, my brother. Anybody else got a praise? Brother George up here. Yes, yes. Amen, amen. That's, that's Darlene. She was in the hospital for, for uh, a co- how many nights was she in? Was it two nights, brother Harvey? Your wife, Darlene, two nights, and she, and she got out yesterday, and she was really, really glad to be home. Let's have brother uh, Ed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else got a, got a praise for us this evening? I, I got one. Remember, we were here, Randy was preaching, we were taking prayer on Sunday night, and we asked for prayer for Aaron. That was Becca's husband, Aaron. He had a fever. He was getting ready to go back to school. Well, I, I checked in with him today, and, and praise the Lord, he's gone back to school. He's teaching again, and his fever has left him. So that's, that's answered prayer, brothers and sisters. And then, uh, let me see here. Man, we've been just haven't been able to host some visitors with us. And each, each Sunday, there's a, there's a couple of new faces that are among us in the congregation. It was, it was really, really encouraging on Sunday to have some that were in the congregation to actually make it into Sunday school the following week. And that, that's a big praise the Lord right there. So praise the Lord for that. And then um, we, had a, we had a pastor search committee team, or a a pastor search team meeting last evening, and um, we've been having them on the regular. But we're really, we're really moving forward. We're, we're, we're the the we're tossing out those those outliers, and we're narrowing things down. And and praise the Lord, we're we're really enjoying a great unity and, and a great uh, camaraderie as we meet together and and discuss the resumes that we're taking a look at. So we praise the Lord for that. Um, anybody out there got a a, a prayer request? prayer request yes yes we do we got Danny Burke you know we, Danny's faithful in, in coming he's, he and his wife are always here and um, he often has us pray for his father and his father we, we remember he's, he's had cancer in the past he had Alzheimer's and they brought hospice in last week and it was just after lunchtime today when Danny's father passed away so they've gone on to Tyler, I think it was, to, to be there with the family. So let's, let's remember Danny and the family as they, as they uh, meet with the rest. Brother Ed? Right. Yes. That was, that was those Floridians, uh, Brother Ed was reminding us of, who have, have that, had that hurricane that's, that's, that's come upon them in parts of Georgia as well. So let, let's remember um, our fellow countrymen there. Yes, Kiki. I was just meeting with a friend in Houston, Burden. Right. 83 years old, I believe. 88. 88 years old. Um, she has been in and out of the hospital with numerous things going on with her, but this week she fell yes. at home. She's still in the home. She fell and was outside in the heat for three hours, I believe, before they found her. So not only did she fall, but she also was, she could have made it. So, but anyway, I think uh, more than likely her son is going to be moving in. So the whole yes. church there is there. But she is just a blessing. But um, Walter's mother this morning was telling me that um, her and her sister just have given up. She says, I want the Lord to take me home. I just can't keep doing this. Because she's fallen several times in the last couple of months. 
Yes. The Chrysler Birdie. She's a precious genius lady. Let's remember our sister Birdie tonight, 88 years old, had a fall, and she's just ready to go on and be, and be with the Lord Jesus. Let's remember her. Um, I, I want us to remember, too, there's a, there's a big fella that comes and meets with us. He's actually a member over at Victory, but sometimes he'll come and be with us. His name's Eddie, and his wife's name is, I know I'm going to say it wrong, Aida. Aida, and they both have COVID. I was speaking to him yesterday, and she's doing some better today, but he's not doing so hot, so he's requested special prayer. That's Eddie and Aida. Yes, Miss Darlene. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Let's remember Brother Wolf. He was with us on Sunday, but I'm sure everyone here has, has already heard. He, he's, he's got cancer, and, and his wife also is, is, is uh, battling cancer as well and tumors. Go ahead, Jan. Jan's friend Nancy in Wyoming. You're going to be spending some time with Nancy. September. Okay, thank you, Jan. Go ahead, George. Yeah, continue to remember Ricky. Um, I was it this. Yeah, I heard from him. Was it Monday? And um, he was in good spirits. Um, he sent me a beautiful text with a, a lovely verse, and um, he says he was doing well. But let's continue to remember Ricky and Jan Bodiford. Linda Pate, but can you give us a little update on Jan Bodiford? That's Darlene. she is. Let's continue to remember Miss Jan. Brother, I'm going to ask since you got the mic, will you just bring these prayer requests to the Lord and we'll get into the Bible study? Yes. 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 And uh, be with me and, and give me your wisdom and humility to handle things the way that I, I should now um, and not the way I used to. And uh, be with Michael as he brings the message and let us uh, receive it the way that you want it received and let us take it with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. I'm glad that you all are here. You know, the devil didn't want us to meet tonight. And I spoke to a, a couple of different people tonight and they just had a real difficulty in getting to service. There was all kinds of obstacles, all kinds of pitfalls, all kinds of barriers that stood in our way that could have kept us from being here this evening. But we've made it here, praise the Lord. And we're going to be wrapping up, Brother Paul, in our, in our study in James. And I think this is the 15th study. And, you know, the, the truth is we probably could have done 15 more. But um, there's, there's so much in here. But we're going we're gonna to wrap it up tonight with our last two verses. And, and we're going to actually look at James 5, if you have it in your Bible there. James 5, and we're, we're going to start in, in uh, the last two verses. It's going to be 19 and 20. And then right after we read that, we're going to jump over. So put your thumb in Galatians. And I've got, I've got mine marked here. So jump over to, to Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. So if you'll be upstanding, we'll read those together. 
And, and, it, and it goes like this, starting in James 5, last two verses. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth, and someone should bring back, uh, someone should bring that person back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Flip over there to the book of Galatians. The book of Galatians, the first two verses go like this. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit, live by the what? Should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted to sin. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this evening. I thank you for my brothers and sisters who are here, for others, Lord, who are gathered around their televisions and phones at home. And I pray, Lord, that you would speak to us tonight, Lord, that you would help us as we go over these verses together. Lord, that we'd leave here knowing something we didn't know. Lord, that we'd be stronger than when we got here. Father, that we'd be more capable when we leave this place to serve you in a way that pleases you. We thank you for all these things, and we pray them in the name of Jesus Christ. And together we say, Amen. The Ministry of Soul Shepherding. That's, that's the title to the message tonight. The Ministry of Soul Shepherding. You know, it's amazing how God works things out. And, you know, I've said it before. Some people call these things coincidences, Walter. But we call them providence. You know, it was just about two weeks ago, and I got a text message from a, a church member here at Cornerstone, a, 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 very, a very faithful church member and a sister in the Lord Jesus Christ. But as she texted me, she was expressing to me some concern that there were several of our members that were MIA, several of, of the members who were once with us but are no longer with us, several of our members who have have disappeared. And this lady, she, she conveyed a concern that some had gotten off track and they had gone out into the world. Of course, she was right. Within a, within a week, my, my wife and I, we were out at a, at a public venue. There was thousands of people there, Walter. And as we were at that event, we, we seen a man. We seen a man and I knew he was a man who had stumbled I knew that he was a, a man who had slipped. I knew he was a man who would fumble in his profession of faith. And as I looked at that man, i got to be honest, I had to take a second look. And my wife, will, she'll bear witness to that. We had to take a second look because we hardly recognized the man. I could barely recognize him because he even looked different. Brothers and sisters, tonight, sin will change you. You fall into sin and it will change the way that you look, Randy. It can take a nice man and it can make him a nasty man. Sin can take a, use, a useful man and make him a useless man. Sin can take a glad man and make him a sad man. And as I looked at that man with my wife, the way we remembered that man in the past, he had a great big smile on his face. He was a jolly man. He was a cheerful man. But when we seen him that evening, we could tell by the look on his face, he looked older. He looked sad. The man was obviously miserable. You see, brother, it was written all over the man's face. Because that's what sin will do to us. But this man's sin, yeah, it was obvious. Yes, it was observable. However, it's not always that case. It's not always that case because the backslider may oftentimes be attending church services regular. The backslider may oftentimes be serving on a particular group within the congregation. Brother Randy, we got to be careful because the backslider can even be standing up and preaching to a large congregation. Perhaps they may not be involved in some open sin. Perhaps they may not be involved in some gross sin, but nevertheless, we've got, we, we've got to, nevertheless, 
We've got to be aware of these things. They are regressing instead of progressing spiritually. They may be involved in secret sins. It may be sins of the heart. It may be sins of the mind that they're involved in. His commitment to Christ, his faith in him, it may not be as fervent as once it was. You see, anyone who is not going forward with the Lord Jesus Christ, if we're not moving forward, Brother Bob, with the Lord Jesus Christ, then we're moving backwards. That's, that's, that's just the way it is. There is no other option. Put it in your outline there if you've got an outline, because the Christian life is either going forward or else it's going backward. And that being true, there, there's a sense which many Christians are guilty of backsliding. But the good news for the backslidden tonight is that when we come back to God through the Lord Jesus Christ, there's always a welcome there on the mat to welcome us back into fellowship. Look at your outline there. You know, the, the Apostle Peter. When we read about the Apostle Peter in the Bible, put it in your outline. There were two ministries that were committed to Peter by the Lord. A, he was to catch men. That was, his, that was his first mission that was given by... It was to catch men. In Luke 5.10 it says, And so were James and John, sons of De Zebedee, Simon's, that's Peter's partners. When Jesus saw Simon Peter, he said, Don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. He told Peter, that man who was a fisherman, Shane, that's how he made his living. He says, don't be afraid. From now on, you're not going to fish for fish anymore. You're going to fish for man. He says, Peter, you catch him, and I'll clean him. You're going to catch man. He says, you're going you're to catch man, but put it in your outline, B. Not only that, but he says, you're going to care for the flock. In John 21, 17, it says this. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus says, then feed my sheep. Brother Paul, there were two ministries given to the apostle Peter. Number one was to catch men. And number two was to care for the flock. But put it in your outline there because there are two ministries that are committed to every Christian. A, the work of soul saving. Soul saving. The Bible tells us that God has made provision. He's made royal provision for the salvation of men, women, and boys and girls throughout the world. It doesn't matter if you live in Texas. It doesn't matter if you live in Tanzania. It doesn't matter if you live in Timbuktu. The Bible says God so loved the world. He made provision for it. And as God's servants, as believers, as individual Christians, as disciples of Jesus Christ, as born-again, blood-bought believers, Jan, as the church, that's you and me, we're to be actively, urgently, and constantly engaged in seeking the lost so that we can bring them into the fullness of all that God has provided for them through the Lord Jesus Christ. There are two ministries, Shane, that are committed to every Christian. We've already seen the first. It's soul saving. But Randy, put the next one in your outline because it's soul shepherding. Soul shepherding. In Genesis 4, it says this. There's a question. You remember that guy Cain in the Bible? He had a brother called Abel. Well, God came to him and, and, and God asked him a question. He asked him where he is. And Cain says, am I my brother's keeper? It's a question. He says, am I my brother's keeper? What's the answer to that question? Yes, Cain, you are your brother's keeper. Yes, Christian, tonight, you are your brother. You are your sister's keeper tonight. As Christians, we are responsible for our brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if they fail, and if they falter, and if they fall face down, if they backslide, we are to be concerned for them, and we are to go after them, just as this text tells us we are. We're to go back to them for one reason, in order to bring them back to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
In James chapter 5, in the two little verses that we looked at, Kiki, we see all of this unfold. And the first thing that we see tonight, the first thing, Joe, and we've got to know this. We've got to write this down. We've got to remember this. We've got to have it on a little post-it on the mirror. We've got to remember this. Number one, Christians are in danger of backsliding. Christians, that's you and me. We're in danger of backsliding. James 5.19 says, My brothers and sisters... He wasn't talking to the world, Paul. He was talking to those in the church. He says, my brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth, is what he says. Michael McNary, not me. Not me. I'll not backslide. I'll go all the way for the Lord Jesus Christ. Perhaps somebody's thinking in their mind. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Remember that guy, Peter? Remember Simon Peter? Big, bad, bold Peter. He was the loudest guy in the room. You couldn't keep him quiet. You couldn't shut him down. Peter, who was ready to die for the Lord Jesus Christ before he drifted. Yet he was going to deny his Lord. Yes, Christian, we're in trouble tonight. We're in danger tonight. Do you think there's something special about you, George? Do you think there's something special about you that you can never backslide? Do, do, do you think that there, there's, there's something that's, that's mightier about you, Shane? Mightier than, than there was about Simon Peter? Simon Peter, that apostle, the only one in the boat that night who was willing and who was wanting to step out on the water and to go toward the Lord Jesus Christ. Do we think there's anything much stronger about us than there was of, of Peter? Listen, if you're a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you love Him, if you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're in danger tonight of backsliding. It's the easiest possible thing to do in all the world. And James indicates that in what he says here in those two verses. He says, if any of you should wander from the truth. Oh, I love this, Rebecca, because it seems like everything that I'm... T it all kind of knits to... The truth, Rebecca. You remembered you answered the question. What is the truth? We were looking at it in Sunday school. Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Brothers and sisters, if you're saved, if you've trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have received forgiveness of sins. And thank you, Jesus. There's nothing in all the world that can ever take that away. You can never be plucked out of the hand of Christ. But the evil one wants to lure you from the truth. We're prone to wonder, is what the Bible says. And the evil one wants to lure us away. Put it in your outline, because this refers to doctrinal error. Doctrinal error. You know, there's a, there's a tendency today... And sometimes I may come across as, as, as sounding a bit like this, but there, there's, a, there's a tendency among some today to, to say that doctrine is not important. That doctrine is not important, but what a fallacy that is. What a terrible, terrible lie that that is. Doctrine is important. You know why people are deceived many times tonight? People are deceived tonight because many of us, we're ignorant we're ignorant about what the Bible says. You go out and you ask the, 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 the average churchgoer, what do you believe? They may respond, oh, I believe what the Baptists believe. Well, what do the Baptists believe? Oh, the Baptists believe what the Bible says. Oh, what does the Bible say? Well, the Bible says what the preacher teaches. Oh, what does the preacher teach? Well, the preacher teaches what the Baptists believe. You see, far too often, we don't know what we believe. Man, if that's the case, and it is the case, we all need to learn. I need to learn. I know nothing. But if that's the case for you, if that's the case for somebody and listening online, get into Sunday school. Oh, man, get into Sunday school. We meet in Sunday school. There was about 50 of us on Sunday, and, and it's not teaching. We go around the room, and everyone has a part to play, and we share insight, and we talk about the Scripture, and everybody learns from one another. It's iron sharpening iron is what it is. Listen, if we want to see Cornerstone Baptist Church grow, just as a sidebar, 
And Cornerstone Baptist Church is going to grow. That I can tell you. But it's going to start in Sunday school. That's where it's going to start. That's where we build relationships. That's where we meet people. That's where people get flesh in the game. It's going to begin in Sunday school. You know, many of us are ignorant tonight. Because of that, we slowly wander away. You see, this refers to doctrinal error. Put it in your outline, Mr. Starr, because it also refers to moral execution. What I mean is moral conduct. We see that in verse 20, Brother Randy. He says, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way, the error of his way. Listen, when we backslide, we wander and we stray from the truth. We fail to apply the truth in our lives. We don't obey the truth in, in, in moral execution. We don't obey the truth in our conduct in our daily lives. Yes, those who love and belong to the Lord, we're in danger tonight of backsliding. It refers to doctrinal error. It refers to moral execution. I thank God for the Wednesday night crew. Man, I thank God for you guys. You guys are, are the cream of the crop. But you, my, my faithful brothers and sisters, none of us are exempt. None of us are exempt from this danger. How do I know that? You know as well as I do. We look around the room. There were people who used to be here with us. It's devastating. They were here with us on the regular. They're not with us anymore. They've gone out and they've backslidden. And the reason for that is because we've got three enemies that desire our downfall. We looked at them earlier on in our study, but put them in your outline again. There's the world without. And James 4, 4 told us, you adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. You see, there is that enemy without. It's the world. But put it in your outline. There's the, there's the flesh within because in James 4, 1, it told us what causes fights and quarrels among you. Don't they come from the desires that war within you, is what it says. Yes, there's the enemy of the, the world without, the flesh within. But put it in your outline, there is the devil around. I was talking to a man just before this service. And he was, he was experiencing this very thing. Listen, the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, it says he's a roaring lion. It says he's moving around. He's moving around. And he's looking for somebody to devour shame. He wants to get you off track. He wants to get us off kilter. He was trying to keep that man from coming to prayer service tonight. But praise God, that man made it. Jesus won. Satan, zero. Jesus Christ won tonight. And so did that man, for he's here with us. Yes, brothers and sisters, Christians may backslide. But number two, put it in your outline. Christians may backslide. But thank you, Jesus. The Lord still loves them. The Lord still loves them. Listen, they're still His. He still longs for them to return. He still longs for their fellowship. He's promised never, ever to let us go. In John 10, 28, it says this, I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. Brothers and sisters, you cannot be saved yesterday and then lost tomorrow. Once you're saved and in the kingdom of God, you're secure and you're safe. God doesn't love your sin. God doesn't love your failure, but God loves you. He still loves us. Put it in your outline, number three. When the Christian backslides, it's our responsibility to love and to shepherd them to recovery. This was the whole burden of James's message. This was the whole pomp of what he was saying here in these verses. You know, someone is quoted, I'm not sure who it was. They say that Christians are the only army who shoot and bury their own wounded. 
you know, you would think that because of our own brokenness, because of our own consciousness, of our own sinfulness, I don't know if you're like me, I'm very aware of what a dirty, rotten sinner that I am. I'm ashamed of myself. I'm such a sinner. And you'd think that our own brokenness would cause us to heed that question that Jesus Christ asked. When he asked, who among us can cast the first stone? Listen, this is convicting to me lately. And you've got to work it out in your own mind. You've got you to take the scripture and you've got to work it out in your own heart. But listen, when a brother in Christ backslides, we're not to abandon them. We're not to criticize them. We're not to talk badly about them. We're not to accuse them. We're not to condemn them. We're not to ostracize them. This passage says we are to go back for them. We are to go back in order to bring them back and to restore them. In Galatians 6, in those two little verses that we read, we're going to take a brief look and put it in your outline. Number four, the recovery of the backslider needs to be undertaken by a qualified Christian. A qualified, it can't just be any old Christian. It's got to be a qualified Christian. Look, we were going through those resumes, weren't we, team? We're looking for qualified people. In order to restore somebody, it needs to be a qualified Christian. Look what Paul says in, in Galatians 6, in those two verses. See how it unfolds here, because he says, A, we must be spiritual. That's what he says. Paul says, you who are spiritual. In Galatians 6, 1, it said, brothers and sisters, if somebody's caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that guilty person. In Galatians 6, 25, it says, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. An unsurrendered, worldly, a carnal, fleshly Christian Engaging in the work of restoration of the backslider will be clumsy, careless, and will cause great calamity and much more trouble and harm than good. You've got to be a spiritual Christian. But number two in your outline, in order to restore the backslider, you've got to be qualified. We must be determined. In chapter 6, verse 1, it says, Brothers and sisters, if somebody is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. Gently is what it says. In James 5, 19 and 20, it says, Bring him back. James 5, 19 says, My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth, someone should bring that person back. We're not to give him the cold shoulder. Our reaction should be, how can I help that man? How can I help that woman? What can I do? How can I engage in the ministry of soul shepherding in that person's life? How can I get this brother back on track with the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes, we got to be spiritual. Yes, we got to be determined. But put it in your outline, we must be humble. We got to be humble. In Galatians 6, 1, and this is where I was going. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught up in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently, is what it says. We've got to be humble. Listen, it's no good going to that backslider. As much as we want to, right, Randy? Randy we want to go and we want to bamboo them. We want to take them behind the shed. We want to put a foot in their teeth. But listen, we can't do that. The Bible says here we've got to be humble. It's got to be done gently. You know, when Jesus restored Peter, he did it with a tender look. You remember? There he was in Luke twenty two sixty one. 61. It says, the Lord turned and he looked straight at Peter. And then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. It was a tender look is how Jesus looked at him. But not only that, it was with a loving word. Because you remember in Mark 16, 7, it says this, Go tell the disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Peter had denied Jesus, but, Peter says, but Jesus says, Hey, go tell the disciples and make sure you tell Peter. 
was a tender word. But look, it was with a gracious question. Because in John 21, 15, it says, When they had finished eating, Jesus said, Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he says. You know I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. You know, sometimes we want to go hard at the backslider. But this passage tells us we need to be humble. Man, we need to be, oh, that could have happened to me. I was talking to my dad about this passage. I was talking to him about a situation that I knew of. You know what he said to me, Randy? He says, you better watch out, son. Make sure that doesn't happen to you. You know, he's right. We got to be humble. But number five in your outline, put it there. The recovery of the backslider, and this is great. The result, results, no, sorry, results, what did I put? The recovery of the backslider results in enormous blessing. That's right. Enormous blessing is what it does. In, in James 5.20 it says, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of his way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. James tells us in verse 20 that then someone has gone away from the Lord and they are brought back. Brother Paul, there are two things that happen to that person. Put it in your outline. Very many sins are hidden. They're hidden. I told you about that little dog I had. It was a beautiful little dog. Just a little teacup. And he died. He was having seizures and he died in the middle of the night. And I went back to, to check on him. I figured he was going to die. And I, and I looked. And if you've ever seen a dead dog, a corpse, they're ugly. Their teeth are showing. They're stiff as a board. They're cold. And I took that little dog because I didn't want any of the children to see it. They were still in bed. And I put it into a little shoebox, and I closed the lid, and I went out into the backyard, and I dug a little hole, and I put that little shoebox in that, in that deep hole, and I put the dirt over that shoebox, and I haven't seen that little ugly corpse since, and I'll never see it again. And that's the way it is here with these sins. Many sins are hidden, the passage tells us. That's the way it is when we repent of our sins, when we confess our sins, when, we for, when they're forsaken, they're at once covered. They're blotted out. They're forgotten about, Brother Paul, never to be remembered again. Man, the blessings are enormous. But put it in your outline. Because the restored one is saved from death. Saved from death. Man, you guys are smarter than me because you obviously know what it's talking about. But in verse 20, it, refer to, it can't refer to a spiritual death because the Christian can never die spiritually. In the book of John 5, 24, it says, Very truly I tell you, everyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has, what? Eternal life and will not be judged but it's crossed over from life to death. Listen, when we get saved, we don't get 10 years life, as Brother Jim's reminded us. We don't get 100 years life. We don't get 1,000 years life. We get eternal life. It, it just keeps on going and 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 going. It's not just a quantity of life. It's a quality of life. John eleven twenty six 26 says, And whoever lives... By believing in me, we'll never die. Well, then I want to know what this text means. I had a terrible time this week, Walter, figuring it out. And I was talking to Pastor Jim. I was talking to my dad. And it seems like it goes back to what we read in verses 13 to 18. Take another look when you get home. It was that whole issue with illness. Talked about illness. You remember we looked at healing? It's, it's that whole issue with, with, with illness. You see, it's a reference to physical death, Shane. That's what it's talking about here. This is scary. Here's the message tonight. The message is this. If you're here tonight, if you happen to be listening online, here's the message. If you're living in sin, beware. If you're a Christian and you're living in habitual sin, beware. And I would plead with you, 
And I would urge you, and I would beg you to come back to Jesus Christ. You see, we may be taken out of this world prematurely if we cast a bad light upon Christ, if we're a bad testimony for Jesus, if we do more harm than good. And I would beg you to turn back to Jesus and serve Him again. No one needs to go down that route because if we confess our sins they're for, forsake, and we forsake them, they'll be forgiven. If you're here tonight and maybe you have backslidden, if you're listening online and maybe you have backslidden, the best time to get back with Jesus is tonight. It's right now. It's not tomorrow. It's tonight. John, 1 John 1, 9 says this. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just, and He'll forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. With every head bowed and every eye closed, it could be that you're here tonight. It could be that you're listening online, and, and maybe you're lost. Maybe you're not backsliding. You were never front sliding. You were never saved to begin with. But if that's you tonight, then you can believe in Jesus Christ. You can believe that He died on the cross for your sins. You can ask Him to forgive you and to come into your life tonight, and He'll save you. You can say a prayer something like this. Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that without you, I cannot be a Christian. But I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. And tonight, I want Jesus to forgive me and to come inside and to live and help me to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. And if you said that prayer, you're listening online, there's a, there's a telephone number that you can call and there'll be somebody on the other end of the line and they'll answer that phone and they will pray with you and encourage you along your Christian journey. Look up here, folks, because tonight, Let's not just be concerned to win the lost. We need to be concerned for the lost. We need to win the lost. But tonight as we break into our groups, let's too be concerned to love and to win back and to care for God's people who were once with us, but they've now gone out. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the grace that you show us each day. And Heavenly Father, we do pray for those who we know who, Lord, they're not with us. They've gone out into the world. And we pray, Lord, that you would make us humble, Lord. Make us gentle. And Lord, that you'd help us to seek to restore them again. We thank you for all these things. We leave them with you in the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And together we say, Amen. Brothers and sisters, we're going to break up. We've got two prayer circles in the back. Shane's going to take one, and uh, Sandy is going to be over here, this one over here. And just break off, and uh, they'll, they'll let you know how we're going to be praying this evening. Thank you for coming tonight. Amen.